Hello. Welcome to one in a series of special programs devoted to the profiling of candidates for local and statewide office. With me here today at our HCTV studio is Kara Thompson, who is running for the position of Clerk of the District Court in District 1, and that happens to be Lewis and Clark County. Welcome. Thank Glad you. to have you here. We need to find out more about you and, and the office you're seeking. So let's begin with a brief introduction okay, thank to our you. audience. Yes, I really appreciate this opportunity. I'm a strong advocate for voting, but not only that, but voting in form. So this is a good opportunity to tell about myself and, and about the position. So a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Conrad, Montana, and I have two children, a son and a daughter. My interests include uh, just being outside, uh, enjoying the great outdoors, snow skiing and fly fishing. I like to do research and study and some genealogy work and and then music is a big interest of mine also. I've been a church organist for 12 years and a church pianist for probably over 30. Mm. So I love sharing my talents in that way and really enjoy that. Yeah, and Conrad is one of those beautiful small towns uh, with a view of the of the Rocky Mountain front, you know, north exactly. of Great Falls. It likes to blow there. Yeah, a the lot wind's more always than blowing. here. <laughs> well, let's before we get into why you, you know your motivation for seeking this position, let's just remind the audience about the the court structure, where district courts fit into the hierarchy or the assembly of courts that people uh, may or may not know about here in Montana. Great question. So. District court is, so there's municipal courts, and those are the lower courts, and you have uh, like a city court, and you have a justice court, a municipal court, and then you have district court, and district court is below the Supreme Court of the state of Montana, and then you go higher up than that, you go to circuit appeals and, and U.S. district court and, and yeah. those types of. So in this case, a Lewis and Clark County constitutes judicial district one. Correct. And we know, because we're at the state capitol, that a lot of activity happens in Lewis and Clark County that involves issues and items that extend beyond the confines of the county. So it, it's not that we're ultra important here, but as the capital city, the, the, uh, the district court gets a lot of business that other district courts might not. My question there is, is every district court coterminous with a county or, or do district courts transcend county lines in some cases? It is uh, within each county there is a district court and there's 56 of them and then within that uh, dynamics then we're put into 22 uh, judicial districts and this like you said being the first judicial district with it being the first judicial district, it's kind of the wild card where any any count any county uh, litigation or process could be filed in the first judicial district. Otherwise, it you know other judicial districts have to stay you know within that jurisdiction and within that county. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about the position itself. Uh, clerk of the district court. I have to admit, I really have no solid sense of what that job entails. So tell us a bit about the job and then what, what is motivating you to seek the position? Okay, good question. I get asked that a lot. What, is, what does the clerk of district court do? And in statute, that is basically set out to be the keeper of district court records and then attend sessions of court, be the jury commissioner, and keep you know the judgments and the orders and decrees entered and um, provide a schedule of the court and be also with the job is you're the administrator of uh, of that district court in that county and the supervisor it's a complex it's a position. very complex it's more than just a a glorified secretary position that yeah. some people have I mean, have as you're speaking, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having a hard time imagining a judge or a court, deal, you know, not having the services of somebody with this widespread of of important functions. You did mention you, you commissioned the jury. W tell us about that. What does that mean? So that is just we we pull a jury. Well, we have a, a 
annual jury pool. So then when a jury trial comes up, then we are the ones to uh, commission the, you know, the jury to come in and put that all together, including, um, you know, paying for witnesses and, um, and then we have bailiffs and, and putting that all together, orchestrating a whole jury trial. Yeah. But it's mostly, you know, keeping track of the jury pool too, which can be, with a large county, is thousands of people yeah. on an annual basis. Okay, now let's get to why you want to do this. And you can, you can sort of tell us about, you have quite an extensive experience. I mean, I'm looking at your, your sort of mini resume on your, <laughs> on your campaign card. You've done a lot of things, that all of which point in this direction, it seems like. But Correct. let's start with why, why you want to do this, why you're running for the office. So I really have a passion for public service number one, and, and I have formerly been a, a clerk of district court in Ponderay County. Uh -huh. So I know what encompasses the, the position, and I really have a passion for all that it does encompass. It's a very interesting, working within district court, it's a very interesting line of work. And I just, uh, community, this is a great way, it's an honor to be a representative of the county where I reside, and and you know, be be a public servant in that way and, and give back to the community. Yeah. Well, I know I'm not alone in wondering from time to time why positions in the judicial branch or the ju judicial system have partisan uh, connections. I mean, you're running as Republican. You have a, a, a right. Democrat opponent. I should mention that you're running for an open seat. The incumbent retired. Is so, retiring. Or yes. is retiring. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so two new people vying for probably a rare opportunity, uh, an open seat. So can you give us a little background on, on why, why it's a partisan race to begin with? So it's set up that way with the counties and, and probably down from the Montana Association of, of Counties. But it's set up as a partisan race, but there's no political platform within the position. We're governed and dictated by approximately 1,100 statutes and, and rules. Mm -hmm. And this being my fourth election, I've had the experience of my opponents in the past thinking they're gonna bring to the, to the position their own agenda. And it's, it's just not part of this position. And having legal experience is very vital so we can understand statutes, be able to research them, how to know how to look them up, know where they're at, what yeah. they mean. And, and they change, all, you know, with every legislative session, there's, there's huge changes or there's small changes that occur. And to be able to usher those changes in and then implement them in the offices is key. Yeah. Is there such a thing as an association of clerks of district courts, is there, there would you is. get together with your peers, presuming you are one, you've been one, Correct. you might be one again here, so do you get together and share like best practices and things like that on a, on a bipartisan basis or would it be on a partisan basis? It's more bipartisan, we get to, there's a Montana Association of Clerks of District Court and we get together annually in a, at a convention and at times there's been an education session that you know has been either implemented along with convention or at a separate time during the year so there's you know at least a once that we we can get together there's also a listserv so we can mm -hmm. bounce ideas off of each other that way or thank goodness for email and and that type of thing too mm -hmm. so um, there is an association, I was a member of it when I was uh, a clerk of district court and I served on the, a few committees within that and it was the uh, nominating committee, the resolutions and bylaws committee, the legislative committee and a district chair uh, that included the executive committee. So those were all opportunities to really grow and, and grow in the more understanding of the workings of, of the position too, so good yeah. opportunities. Well, let's just backtrack a little bit. I didn't give you a chance to actually illustrate your experience 
leading up to this, other than sure. having served already as a clerk of the district court. So tell us a little bit about your education and that background experience that's propelled you this far. Sure, so my education, back to high school, I graduated from Conrad High School, and then in 2010, I graduated with honors in a, with an Associates of Paralegal Studies from the Colorado Technical University, and, and then I am currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in business management from Helena College and Montana Tech, and then along with that, I, I obtain annual uh, continued legal education credits and in other various trainings and, and seminars. And so then with my past experience with the Clerk of District Court, I was, I served for seven and a half years at that position. There was um, some unexpired term from my predecessor and that I fulfilled. And prior to being appointed Clerk of District Court in 2005, I was the chief deputy for two years. Um, prior to that, I had um, other county employment started in the treasurer's office for part-time, and then I fulfilled full-time by working in juvenile probation office and justice court and county attorney's office, and so I had expanded knowledge in, in the county government also, and that was a great experience too. And worked in the private sector before county uh, government and as a legal assistant, uh, well, as a legal secretary. And I worked a couple years doing that. And it's given me the opportunity to work on both sides of the counter, not just bringing documents in to be filed, but actually filing the documents. Yeah. And then I work uh, presently with the Department of Corrections. I have, that's what brought me to Helena. Uh, for the last three and a half years as a paralegal in the Legal Services Bureau with um, Department of Corrections. And that's given me a really uh, wide understanding of the importance and what is necessary for district court to provide to the Department of Corrections because all the information that Department of Corrections has involving an inmate comes from district court and mm. the timeliness of it and the importance of it is, is very key. Yeah, uh, one other kind of backtrack to the position and, and the function. Do you work with a specific judge or are you serving multiple judges in the district? Here in, in Lewis and Clark County, there's four judges presently and so I would work with all four. Yeah. Okay, here's a question that just sprang to mind, and it's, it's a little bit off-key, but I think you'll okay. enjoy it. You know, it sounds as if this is a, a highly structured position. There's a lot of tradition. There's a lot of discipline, self-discipline. But I'm wondering aloud if there's an opportunity to bring innovation into the courtroom. And what I have in mind is, you know, I don't think anybody's ever played the piano or, or an organ in a courtroom, <laughs> you know, to, to build some drama or to provide right. some uh, entertainment. Is that something you'd aspire to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, probably not, unless it was requested, maybe. <laughs> but we'll have to get to the judges on that one. Right. But I have, in my past, I have seen to where it's been a pretty stripped-down courtroom as far as technology to finally getting in, in Pondre County, just before I, I left my term, I expired my term, there, they were putting in um, speakers at each uh, council table and in the jury box. And so that was allowing for better hearing. Yeah. And then there was vision net. We didn't have that before. And different technology like that. Now maybe it has now expanded to more computer monitors, which it's in the larger counties that has been implemented. All of that is uh, down from the court administration's office. We can want for those things and we can request for those things, but it's, it's pretty much, you know, given to us by, by the court administration's office and not, yeah. not our own implementation, but. Right, which it reminds progress. me almost nightly on, on newscasts, network newscasts that are local, if there's any story about what's going on in, in our district courts or even lo in lower courts, the picture we see is a picture of a picture, you know, with monitors right. and videos 
testimonies and things like that. So it's commonplace to the citizen viewer that that technology is in place, but I understand it's, it's a relatively recent uh, vintage. Right, exactly, especially in district court. Yeah. Not so much in federal court because they've had it for a while, but. Well, we've run smack dab out of time, but I want to give you a, a moment or two to, to address the audience directly and just uh, give, give your best pitch for your candidacy. Okay, thank you. Again, I'm Kara Thompson, a candidate for Clerk of District Court for Lewis and Clark County. And I hope this has been uh, provided information uh, about myself and the position. And I really appreciate, I want to publicly thank all of those for their support they have given me. The votes that have been cast on my behalf during the primary election. Now we look forward to the general election on Tuesday, November 8th. Absentee ballots come out this uh, Friday, October 14th approximately. And I really appreciate everyone's support and, and vote. And Hopefully inform yourself and, and know who's on the ballot and, and the initiatives that are there also. It's very important. So I appreciate this time and, and thank you for listening and, and thank you for your votes. And thank you, Kara Thompson, for joining us here today. Um, our respect is huge for anybody who has the gumption to run for public office and who has a passion for public <laughs> service. So thanks again. Thank you very much.